Today we're taking a first look at the Stanton Sherpa Gen 3. Today we're taking a first look at the Stanton Sherpa in titanium and Reynolds 853 steel. These are both made in the UK and I cannot wait to compare these two. These are the two most beautiful bikes I've ever seen in my life. Stanton has great lines and I love just the shape of their frames, but the finish on these is really special and they've really outdone themselves. We're gonna be comparing these two frames and then I'm gonna build up the steel one, ride it for a couple weeks, really get to know it, and then film a review and that night swap all the parts over to the tie, ride it on the same trail the next day, just like we did with the Big Al and the Big Wig, and compare the ride between the two and see if there is a difference and if it's worth the price for you. These frames are size 17. They're identical bikes, except the one's made out of titanium and this one's made out of Reynolds 853 tubing. They're both welded in the UK and they're the exact same bike. So this is gonna be really cool to compare. I gotta show you the close-ups of these because they are absolutely stunning. This is a custom color I had built. Stanton has a really cool option where you can do custom colors and I've been dying to have a mint green hardtail and I was waiting for the right one and I think the Sherpa is the perfect bike for it. And it reminds me of an old Bianchi, which I love those old bikes. And this looks absolutely stunning. As much as I like Thai, I think the mint green Sherpa is my all time favorite best looking bike. All right, let's look at it a little closer. So here it is in the beautiful mint green color and they surprised me and put my logo on there. That is so cool. And I'm going to be honest, it might impact my review a little bit because this is super rad of them to do that. I will do my very best to not let it impact the review because I'm more loyal to you guys than to companies that put my logos on it. But I think the world of Stanton. So Dan Stanton, the genius behind Stanton Bikes, he is the most knowledgeable builder and designer that I've found in all my interactions with all the different hardtail makers. He understands ride feel, suppleness, uh, tubing thickness, the difference between how you have to design a steel bike versus a titanium bike. He gets that more than anybody that I've met. He is truly a mad scientist and it's a pleasure to have another one of his bikes in on the channel. I really respect him and he has a knowledge that is second to none. And you'd be surprised how many companies out there um, are designing bikes that don't have 5% of the knowledge that he has. So I really appreciate someone that's been doing this for so long and that understands the subtle nuances between the different tubing types and how thick it has to be. Anyway, he's got some great videos on YouTube. You should check it out a little bit behind the scenes of his company and what's going on there and the decision making that he makes into when he designs these bikes. So you can order Stanton's as a Taiwan build with 4130 Chromo, which is gonna save you money or as a UK build with Reynolds 853 tubing, or as a UK build titanium. So this is the middle of the price range. These are not budget bikes. These are for the discerning hardtail rider who knows exactly what they want and are banking on Dan's reputation and knowledge in creating a fantastic bike for them. So the Sherpa is meant to be, in my opinion, what hardtails are best at and that is a light, zippy, short travel trail bike for riding trails. It sounds like it's supposed to fit in the same genre as something like the Niner Sur 9, the Spot Rocker, the Sage Powerline, just a 120 mil hardtail that's no nonsense and light and quick, but super fun. But the difference about this is it has very modern geo. All those other bikes I mentioned have like a 67 degree head angle. And when you go look at the geo charts of this, you'll see it has a 67 degree head angle as well. However, that's measured with the 120 mil fork measured at 25% sag. So if we're comparing apples to apples, this bike has a 65 and a half degree head angle unsagged with a 120 fork. That is slack for a trail bike and that's right where I like to see it. So I have really high hopes for this bike. We have a 441 reach in this size 17, which I'm gonna call a medium. And that's about 10 mil shorter than we're seeing on some really rowdy bikes. And I'm okay with that. On my trail bikes, I like them a little shorter in the cockpit. It uh, lets me whip them around a little more and I don't take them on the really rowdy places where I just want the most stretched out, aggressive attack position I can find. It has a 56 mil bottom bracket drop at SAG. 
and a 75 and a half degree seat angle at SAG. Let's see, that's probably gonna be a little bit closer to 74. So on paper, it looks like it's going to be a modern version of the great steel hardtails that we loved back in the day. I suspect it's gonna be like a Sur 9 that can get rowdy and that can rail corners like the Sur 9 can't. I feel like this thing is gonna be kind of like my middle child or my Banshee Paradox, but even zippier and even more comfortable. We'll see, these are all speculation at this point. We have a 30.9 seat tube in here. Uh, that's the smaller seat tube diameter. So if you are building one of these up, make sure you check that your seat tube fits that. You might have to get a different dropper. It has a 435 mil chainstay. That's not the rear center, that's the chainstay. So uh, that includes the bottom bracket drop. And we're gonna see how that rides because some of my favorite bikes in that category have 435 mil chainstays. These are ED coated, so they're not going to rust. We've got a threaded bottom bracket. We have clearance for 27.5 by 3.0s. And they say clearance for 29 by 2.4, but that's UK clearance where they have mud and they need clearance. Here in the desert, we don't need as much clearance. So I'm gonna find out how much clearance we can actually get in here. Beautiful cable routing, fully external except for the dropper. Uh, we've got a beautiful matte finish on this. I will say, I think there's a different person who welds the steel frames from the tie frames because just looking at the welds, they don't quite look like a stack of dimes on their steel frames like they do on the tie frame. The tie frame looks flawless on the welds. This looks good. I'd give it a nine out of 10. That doesn't mean these are not strong frames. It doesn't mean anything other than purely aesthetics. The paint looks good. I like it more than the Switch Niner paint job I had a little while ago. There are a couple little small imperfections when you're looking in little grooves. It's so hard to paint in there. So I'm not gonna be too nitpicky about that, but it's not quite as stunning and flawless as the Canfield Nimble 9 paint job. This bike has fixed dropouts but Stanton is working on a sliding dropout system so you can replace this whole dropout in the rear one day, hopefully, with sliding dropouts if you do want to do it single speed or you know adjust the chain stay length. And I'm excited about that. I love options and sliding dropouts have gotten so good. We've got two water bottle holders inside the frame and it looks like it does not interrupt the seat tube. So I should be able to run a big dropper even with a water bottle mount here, which I love. And like I said before, I think the shape of their frames is perfect. I love just these simple two triangles, no crazy weird swoops, no huge seat tube gussets that aren't needed here, just simplicity. And I think there's something absolutely stunning about a simple, beautiful hardtail. And this mint green with this metallic gray is absolutely stunning. This is the most beautiful bike I've ever laid eyes on. Before we build it all up, I want to see what size tires fit in here and what size don't. We got to get experimental. This is designed for a 29 by 2.4. So why not throw a 29 by 3.0 on and see how it fits? Hey, that's actually kind of surprising. This is a 29 by 3.0 on a 45i rim. This is the biggest wheel I have. And it's clearing the seat tube. Where is it rubbing? It's rubbing right here. Wow, that's actually surprising. So I think we're gonna get way better clearance than we thought. Yeah, it's just barely rubbing the chain stay here. Wow, that's pretty impressive though. And like I said, I don't live in the UK. I don't have mud where I live. I live in the desert. So I'm not approving these for bigger tires. I'm just curious and I wanna show you so you can make an informed decision. This is a Hunt Enduro Wide with a 2.6 tire on it. Curious if this will fit. Oh man, that totally fits. There's like, I can fit my finger in there. Totally fits with a 2.6. 
Ooh, we might be able to fit a 2-8 in here, which could open it up for even more people. All right, this is exciting. All right, here we have a 29 by 2-8 on a 40i rim from GTL Bike. Remember, Stanton uh, says this fits up to a 2.4. So we're just getting experimental. If you enjoy this type of information in my first looks and my reviews and you like the content I create, Give it a thumbs up. I know everybody says that. What it helps YouTube know is that people like this and it will recommend it to more people and it will help my channel grow and help me be able to make more of these videos more often. So subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like this. If you need bike advice for your next bike and you're wanting to pick my brain on what size fit on different things and sizing recommendations and how does bike A compare to bike B, become a patron. I offer a consultation service over there and I love helping people steer away from bad purchase decisions to get the perfect bike for them. All right, 29 by 28. It's rubbing, chain stay just barely. But it looks like if I dish the wheel, it would clear. So yeah, I'm gonna say 29 by 26 max. Still, that's pretty awesome and opens up a lot of possibilities. Boy, I would love this thing with these 29 by 28s. That would be really fun for bike packing. Finally, we're going to test a 27.5 by 3.0. One of my favorite wheel sizes. I still think plus bikes are so awesome and so much fun, especially hardtails. Stanton says it is rated for this size. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Plenty of clearance. Yep, we probably got five mils on each side at least. And this is a true 3.0. These are on my night 45 eyes. So that's a really big tire. Ooh, that means we can get mullet, experimental. Who knows what we're going to do with this? We're going to see what this bike likes. Some bikes like plus tires, some like 29ers, some like thin 29ers, some like big 29ers. We're going to see what makes this bike tick. Man, this is stunning. There's a big price difference between the Sherpa tie and the traditional 853 Sherpa. Titanium's a space age material. It's harder to work with. It's more expensive. It's more exotic. And so you're gonna pay more for it. There's also a rather significant weight difference between the two of these. When I pulled them out of the box, I could instantly tell that the tie frame was significantly lighter. The Sherpa tie with a seat collar and the rear axle installed came in at 4.12 pounds for the size 17. That is super light. So we should be able to build this bike up extremely light if we have an extremely large budget. The steel frame came in at 5.81 pounds. That's 1.69 pounds difference between the two. That is significant. So does that mean this bike's gonna ride bad or you shouldn't get the steel one? No, everyone's got a different budget but the titanium one is noticeably lighter and you will feel a difference. Even with the same exact parts, I totally expect to feel the weight difference and just in the frame. Now, the frame isn't the most important place to save weight, but saving 1.69 pounds is significant, especially if you're gonna be racing it and be competitive on these bikes. Let's take a quick look at the tie frame and then we're gonna build up the steel one. Now I'm making some assumptions here. I make a lot of assumptions in my first look videos, but I'm assuming that Stanton puts the best of the best craftsmen that they have on their tie frames. Makes sense, you're spending a lot more money for this. The welds are flawless. They look absolutely incredible. Uh, I, I seriously can't find a single flaw in any of the welds aesthetically. So I have a theory that this is a different welder than the steel frames, or at least that they spend a little more time welding the tie ones because the welds are going to be visible and not covered with paint. Stanton also did something super cool on this. They anodized the logo here and bead blasted the heritage wrap on there. It looks absolutely incredible. Both of these bikes are truly stunning.
Another thing I really like about Stanton frames is that they're ISO tested and certified. So I know that this is rated to handle the abuse that I'm going to put it through. And Dan does a really good job of getting them as supple as possible while still passing that certification. And that is the big difference between something like a Chromag where they just overbuild it so that it's going to be plenty strong, but it doesn't have that nice balanced smooth, supple ride feel. And Stanton has a reputation for having some of the smoothest riding bikes out there. And when I talk with Dan, he's always talking about bikes and he's like, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for something smooth and springy, like flexy, like kind of compliant or something stiff and uh, rigid with some great power transfer? And he knows how to tweak the designs to make them do that. And in one of his videos, he talks about how with titanium, he has more margin for error to be able to play with that uh, property of it. Whereas with the steel ones, he has to get them about as thin as he possibly can and get real close to that edge of how thin can I make it while still keeping it strong enough to pass certification. But with the tie, he's got a little more wiggle room. So as we can obviously see, 1.69 pound difference is significant. All right, it's all built up. I wanna take you through my build. This is the most beautiful bike I've ever seen, and beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Everybody has different standards for what they love. To me, this looks like the perfect hardtail. As much as I would have loved to bling this out with totally brand new parts, that's not in my budget. So I've reused a lot of parts from other bikes. That's how I build up these bikes. I get a frame in, I take bike A apart, put all those parts on bike B, and then when bike C comes in, I take all the parts off of this and put it on bike C. And I just keep recycling the same parts over and over. So the goal for this was to keep it light, keep it snappy, and keep it true to what this bike is designed to do. Total weight came in at 27.78. That's the lightest steel bike I've ever had on the channel. And going tie, it's going to be 1.68 pounds lighter. But still, sub 28 pounds is really cool for a modern hardtail that can get a little bit shreddy. So I've got a 120 mil SID 35 up front. It's the SID Select Plus. It doesn't have all the fancy damper options and I'm just fine with that on this bike. For wheels, we're running the Gulo Carbon wheels. This is their Enduro wheel set, the 30i width with 24 hole carbon spokes on it. These things are ridiculously light. They're super supple. They're gonna fit this bike to a T. Running 2.3 tires front and rear, specialized eliminator front, and specialized ground control 2.3 in the back. I'm running a 9.8 stout stem. I'm running a Cane Creek Hellbender 70 headset. I'm running 1UP carbon bars. Those are my favorite bars. And I put the 35 mil rise on here because I feel like the stack might be a little low on this, but I need to experiment. I haven't ridden this. I'm going to start with the tall bars and we'll see if it suits a smaller bar. I've got my trusty Ergon GD1 grips that I have on every single bike. For brakes, I'm running SRAM Guide RSCs. They're great brakes. I really like them, but I prefer the Paul clampers even more. I've ordered some more clampers, but they're not here yet. So I wasn't able to put them on this build. So once the Paul clampers get here, I'm putting those on. Race face turbine, 170 mil cranks with a 32 chain ring. Derailleur and cassette and shifter is a micro shift Advent X 10 speed. Love this drivetrain. I run it on all my bikes. 200 mil front rotor, 180 rear. And I've got a 9.8 Fall Line R 150 mil dropper in here. This is a truly stunning bike. I'm impressed it came in so light. I cannot wait to take this thing out. In fact, I'm already dressed in my riding clothes. I'm ready to go. So as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm going to go for a little night ride because I can't sleep knowing this bike is sitting here built up in my basement and I'm not riding it. So I'm super stoked with this. Stanton does some really cool things. They can do any color bike from the RAL catalog. You just get them the RAL number and they can paint it that color. That makes it unique. I've never seen another Sherpa this color and it is absolutely stunning. All right, it's time to put some miles on this thing. Before we do that, we gotta listen to these Gulo hubs. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. <laughs> 